at the session notes planned for today? Notes planned? No, I didn't. Because I was like, just came playing football. Oh, so you just came back from playing football. Okay. Yes. That's fine. I'm like, yes, football is a good game. Like, I usually play badminton, but like, today nobody was there and like only hmm, like two, three people uh, people were there so i thought just go and play football because there are like uh, in football there are like 15 to 14 <laughs> children just mm. come to right come to okay okay so today was a very small group is what you're saying <laughs> no it was large my goodness we have a pretty small ground and if you uh, consider that like yeah you can say that was a pretty less number because uh, Usually there are like thirty to forty-five children. Mm-hmm. So okay. we have a pretty small ground to play in. Okay, okay, okay. Um, how many people did you play with your match of football? No, like there are uh, not like particular rules. We don't have a particular playground. We just play with up uh, in a lawn. With trees and uh, no, no. I think you misunderstand the question. So what I meant was, how many people did you play with? So when you you said that oh, yes, you will say four. fifteen. Oh, okay. There were fifteen people. Oh, okay. But that... in badminton, there were three or four. Oh, in badminton, and today you played football. Yes. All right. Well, that sounds very fun. Um. So, uh, you know, I um, happen to look at. I'm sorry. You were saying. Um, uh, have you played football when you were younger? I'm uh, I'm a tennis player. I was a tennis player for a very long mm-hmm. time, and then I played badminton. Uh, now I'm in college, so I don't play anything for now. But I'm planning on playing badminton again in a bit because I have uh, exams and stuff. So, so it's a little difficult. But yeah, football. My, I I never played football because I never had a ground to go to. So I just played tennis. <laughs> so, yeah. Uh-oh. So you had a particular court to play tennis? Yes, yes, of course. So I went to a, a tennis training ground and then they had many courts. So I just played mm. tennis over there and yeah. Yeah, we are, we just have one, like, uh, I guess we have two courts. Yes, we have two courts. You have two tennis one, courts, okay. No, not ten. Yes, we have two tennis courts and two badminton courts. Oh, okay, okay, okay. Wow. Okay. So, uh, are these courts within your apartment complex, or do you go out somewhere to play? Um, no, it is uh, under uh, apartment complex. Oh, it's in the apartment complex. Okay. Okay. Well, that is really cool. Um, so I'm glad. <laughs> so, um, I just wanted to ask. So today I looked at our, uh, you know, session notes just for today, and um, yes. It's uh, the topic is generational um, gap. I think that was the topic. Is that something that interests you, or do you want to talk about something else? What do you feel? It's all up to you. Like I don't personally, I say like I don't know the meaning of the word you just said for the topic, so (laughs) I didn't understand. All right. So in that case, do you mind if we, I can explain a little bit of the topic, yes. we can talk a little bit and then I can give you feedback. That's all. Okay. okay. Cool. So generation, do you understand the meaning of the word generation? Yes. Generation. What do you mean? What do you understand by that? Like next generation or like huh. the future. Okay. But does generation only mean future? No, can it, it mean can past? mean like. Yes, it can. It can mean past. But what what do you mean when you say generation, the next generation? What do you mean by that? Uh, the next. Uh, oh man. I can't tell. Like it is very hard. That's okay. Try you your use best. Ge- you use generation in like thousands of words, to be honest, and like sentences. <laughs> but like the perfect meaning with that, I think is like to. Uh, say like a set of people or like generation to the next mm. level or the past level yeah you're right when you say generation is a set of people you are right so 
uh, in very basic terms, generation means a bunch of people or a set of people like you described who are born relatively around the same time. So let's say, so I'm born in 2001, right? So people who are born in, let's say, 2000 to 2003 and even 1999 and stuff, we're all part of one generation of people because we are all relatively part of the same age group, right? So that is what you mean by generation. So when you say next generation, you're talking about people who are going to be born 10 years you know, ahead. Uh, and if you talk about the previous generation, you say my parents belong to the previous generation because they were born 30 years ago, right? So it's like, that is what they mean by generation. So when you say generation gap, right? Uh, this is a little difficult, so don't worry. You don't have to answer this. But like when you say generation gap, you're talking about the gap in beliefs, the gap in knowledge between two generations. So very simply, you have your headphones on, you are attending class on your phone or your laptop or an electronic device, right? This but phone. in your when your parents were small, they didn't have any of this, did they? No. Right. So because they didn't have it as kids, when they're adults now, when they're, you know, however old your parents are, they will not be able to fully understand how a computer works, how a laptop works, you know, because they didn't have it growing up. You and I had it growing up. <laughs> they didn't. So because of that, the <laughs> first thing when they look at a laptop or something, they're going to be like, what is this? How do I work with this? You know? <laughs> That is a generational gap. So quickly, I was wondering if you could tell me one or two instances of um, a generational gap that you've noticed. Oh, so like, yes. <sighs> when, uh, when I was small and like my father bought me a brand new personal computer so mm -hmm. like I thought that it would be easy to use I have already learned just to press the button and then it will go on then press the start button and turn it off <laughs> okay, okay so I I only knew that because um I I never saw a computer before so mm -hmm. like even my friends don't have like when my father bought it then only they bought it so so, like, I was wondering what to do in that. And then uh, my father called some, like, uh, some of his friends over mm -hmm. to, mm -hmm. like, uh, they knew how the computer works. So, I just watched them, uh, at them, like, what are they doing? What is going on? And, like, they are just, like, um, pressing the keys, uh, just seeing the monitor. And, like, they are, like, Oh, right, right. <laughs> Hacker system full. <laughs> like, of course. And mm. I was confused. I had a big brother at that time. He knew a little bit. So, yes. So, okay. So, you, you, what, you are describing a generational gap that you have witnessed by yourself. And it's not your parents not knowing enough. It's you who didn't know how to work the laptop and... Okay, so that is a brilliant example. That is a very common un like uh, occurrence, you know, if I may say, where sometimes parents or adults, they, you know, they don't know how to send emails or they don't know how to reply to WhatsApp or, you know, stuff, stuff like that. Yes, yeah. like my grandfather, uh, my grandfather, like he has a WhatsApp video call with us. So he, uh, we tell him to like the, switch the camera to the front camera. And mm -hmm. he's like, what to do, my? Tell me, beta. What to do? <laughs> yeah. yeah, that is so common. <laughs> when they can't even press that button, you know, they can't find that button. And yeah, <laughs> yeah, that is a very common example. Well, um, you know, that is very interesting. <laughs> so you know, considering that we have about like you know four minutes left, and you know the the meeting will automatically kick us both out if we don't leave. Um, I was wondering if I could, you know, give you a little, little feedback here and there. Is that okay? Yeah. All right. So first thing, you're a very confident guy. Okay. That is amazing. Please keep smiling. Keep talking. Very important that is. Um, and second, your English is actually very good. Um, it's your sentence construction is quite good. 
it's quite and your vocabulary for someone your age is very extensive so you know that's very good it's com- very commendable you are not of your age like, <laughs> which is another uh, generational gap yes. thing <laughs> you are not your age you act older all generational gap you were saying like, something like um yes i was saying like i um i have to frame sentences in my mind and then speak it because if i speak like continuously i will just forget uh, like forget the word which i'm uh, saying and put the wrong tense in it and mm-hmm. then it will just fall apart oh so. yeah no that happens but you know um and i say this i have a long one. way to learn by the way exactly exactly i was just going to say you are very young you have a very long way to learn and your progress is bound to be you know step by step you can't learn english in a day <laughs> so um if anything um practice makes perfect okay can i call you darsh is that okay okay yeah so practice makes perfect darsh so with anyone who can speak english right fluently if you just converse with them daily it will definitely improve your english um and um, just one tiny sort of detail i wanted to add when you're talking in sentences right um make sure that when you start a sentence you finish the sentence so you know if you have an idea in your head and you you you're going you're talking about it then suddenly another idea comes and you interject in between so let's say for example this is for example i can just be talking about you know you know my day i can just be like yeah you know my day was good and but you know my best friend came and told me you know so did you notice how i disconnected those sentences yeah. there were two separate sentences that i joined together <laughs> so if you start one sentence finish it because that way you will get your idea out fully your thoughts out fully and you will not confuse the other person because the other person will also be wondering right so that's a very small thing practice makes perfect so i feel like that's all you need to um, improve and uh, just a very small question do you read uh, um <laughs> i don't know like uh, right now my exam is going on so yes, oh, no no I, i'm saying do you I read like... story books do you read story books uh, for fun not not uh, textbooks oh sure yeah um, like i go to our, our library to read books sometimes but like uh, most of uh, them are like in hindi i found like i find like very small uh, type of like books in english mm. so if i found one i start reading and use a bookmark to book it and then like uh, okay the next day i read it continuously like um, every sunday i go there so yes all right okay so you know one last suggestion i'd give you is to improve any language let's say not only english not only hindi any language is to read the literature of that language to read books written in that language so you know like next time if you are in your library as you say and you find a book that is you know not relatively difficult to understand and stuff and you know if you read that book the language that they use the uh, the idioms the way they structure their sentence the the vocabulary it's all going to be different and it's all going to be new so you know that's a brilliant way to learn so that's just my suggestion um you know like you said long way to go practice next perfect and read books and um i think that's all i have to say um i think we have about a minute left uh, do you have anything else to say before i end the meeting Uh, i was like uh, no i don't have like uh, most uh, most of my doubts are like clear so in that case uh, i think we can mm. end the meeting yes. um all right okay it was brilliant talking to you uh, good Thank luck you. and i really hope you can learn english fully someday yes thank you bye of course bye bye dash bye bye